If esports are to be inclusive, they must be open and welcome to everyone. That means not only appealing to people who fit a poorly constructed stereotype. Check out the frequently asked questions for this week for more information on stereotypes. How do we ensure we promote inclusion? This will vary from country to country and is set out by the relative legislation in each nation. The United Kingdom introduced the Equality Act 2010 as a single piece of cross-cutting legislation throwing together some 70 older laws relating to gender equality, disability, race relations, etc. If you're going to understand the best way to make sure esports are conducted fairly and inclusively in your country, you should always start with the legislation. What you will find is various organisations will help you summarise key legislation. For example, the University of Bristol Law School produced the infographic in the course sheet to explain how this UK piece of legislation identifies nine protected characteristics. These nine are race and ethnicity, disability, religion or belief, age, sexual orientation, gender, with gender reassignment, pregnancy and maternity, and marriage and civil partnership being the new protected areas defined in the 2010 legislation. You will find similar helpful information following your own nation's laws, often following the same principles and protections. When trying to understand equality legislation, keep in mind, unless it states otherwise, equality legislation applies to everyone equally. Under UK law, as a 44-year-old white gay man in a civil partnership, my age, ethnicity, sexuality, gender and relationship status, for example, are equally protected as an 83-year-old Asian heterosexual woman who is married. Only where the law states otherwise would this be different. For example, if I was disabled and the 83-year-old Asian woman was not disabled, then the protections under the law for disabilities only apply to me. They would only apply to the 83-year-old Asian woman if she developed a disability. There is an excellent award-winning video you can watch through the link on the course sheet explaining how equality and diversity works under this UK law. Do not make the mistake with equality legislation of thinking, providing for gender equality, for example, only applies to women. While a law may have been produced because gender equality required, and still requires, addressing because women are at a disadvantage, the legislation usually seeks to harmonise rights, not raise those of disadvantaged groups at the expense of advantaged groups. How do we promote inclusion in esports? Esports exist in virtual environments as well as physical ones, and certainly in the virtual arena, you might ask, what does it matter? Take the example of a 2021 news story titled Quad Gods, the world class gamers who play with their mouths, relating to gamers and esports athletes who are quadriplegic experiencing paralysis in all four limbs. These players are able to compete and win against those who do not live with their physical disability. As the gamer Nia Stevens states, people wouldn't think that the person on the other side of the avatar is beating them by playing with their mouth. Why does it matter? Why has this project produced an ethics code in esports? Why has this project examined in detail the means of creating esports centres? Because we know, online and in existing settings, there are issues of discrimination across a number of areas, including gender, race and sexuality. We want to do better. We want esports to be inclusive so no one is left out or feels gaming is not for them. OK, one last set of considerations and one of the reasons life is so interesting. An early aim of this project was the promotion of social bonding through students participating with the project, then applying this onwards to esports. Such social bonding must come from respecting each other's opinions and approaches to both virtual and physical environments. During a 2018 presentation in Cannes, Normandy, I asked where we should start with respecting each other. I opened by paraphrasing the opening to Charles Dickens' 1850 novel, David Copperfield. What can I do to put you at ease? I am born, I grow. That's really where we should start, don't you think? One key means of supporting social bonding and inclusion is finding points of commonality, because millennia of human civilizations, hundreds of years of conflict and peace and more conflict, 
and decades of legislation around equality and inclusion, just all being human beings is not enough to make us want to get along. We have to find other points of commonality. It is also the case when we do seek friends or social groups, we do so with people similar to us or who share our beliefs or interests, in many cases, our geography, etc. From this, there is surely hope we can use gaming and from that esports as a means of drawing people together from very different places, beliefs, etc. Through virtual engagement as well as esports conventions and tournaments. Again, making sure this begins with respecting each other as a basic starting point is vital. Context is king. Alongside social bonding is the need to remember and respect context. My favorite slide when I'm teaching is my context is king slide, which you can see on the course sheet. It notes you cannot understand a situation unless you take some time to appreciate the context it arises in, meaning you cannot simply judge the, the situation based entirely on your own perceptions. Don't get me wrong. This should not mean you do not retain your moral code and understanding of life, fairness, etc. It means you should consider what your reaction is based on what you understood of the person, the situation, and where both arise from. For example, my slide shows Prince William announcing to the press the birth of his third child, while a photograph of the same incident would suggest Prince William is presenting a very different gesture to the media. This is something, for example, referred to in the guidance produced for interpreting legislation such as the Equalities Act 2010 when dealing with discriminatory language. If what is said can be dealt with by asking the person to explain why they think that, perhaps you can use the discussion to explain to them why it was offensive and to perhaps alter their perception. Equally, and again depending on context, the correct act may be to report what was said to the appropriate authority, your boss in the workplace, an adjudicator or referee in an esports tournament, etc. If your head is spinning, as we say in the UK, do not worry, you are not alone. While documents like the Equalities Act 2010 are good pieces of legislation, they are subject to the most significant variable in the world, you and me, the wonderful, complex, inconsistent, irrational human being. Just like social bonding in all other aspects of life, how we are understood and perceived is not entirely in our control. Each and every person will interpret what you say and what it means in their own individual way. And how they react is governed by the very own individual set of beliefs and informed by individual experience. Is your head still spinning? Okay, let me explain this to you in a way I do my students. At this point in the lecture about equality, I would ask my students to close their eyes and picture a tree in their minds. If I asked them all to explain what they saw, they would describe a tree and everyone else would know that it was a tree. It has a trunk with branches running up and out from the trunk with leaves coming off those branches. Okay, it's a tree. But is it the same tree? Would everyone know its type? Oak tree, willow tree? Would everyone picture the same number of branches, the same clustering of leaves, the same color of leaves? The answer is no. Even if the person described the tree in great detail, they would still not be able to get everyone to see in their minds the same tree they saw. Close your eyes again. Picture your tree. Is it a tree you have in your garden? Is it a tree you have your first kiss under? Is it a tree from some nightmare film or your favourite game? Is it the tree you fell out of when you were a child and broke your wrist? Like I did. All of these things are based on your own personal life experience and cannot be absolutely shared with others or described in such a way that someone else will absolutely understand them. Enough of trees. Let me show you something else to explain why social bonding, equality, and indeed respect are going to have to be about more than just shared virtual or physical spaces or excellent ethical charters. Take a look at the sheet at the drawing of a duck. Or is it a rabbit? Or is it a duck again? Arguably, it is both simultaneously, and we would need a whole other MOOC to consider the subject of post-structuralism and semantics this drawing often features in. For our purpose, it is useful to remember if we want to have an inclusive environment for esports, as well as all other aspects of life, we have to appreciate difference and diversity, not only in each other as human beings, but also in the way we use and interpret language, 
how we experience shared events through our own very personal lived experiences.